Hi parents, thank you for watching this video. I'm Elaine from Great Solution Jimmy Math. In the previous video, I explained how we can draw models for PSLE fraction questions. This tutorial will be focused on a method we call the branching method. So when do we use the branching method? When we see keywords such as a fraction of the remaining or a fraction of a fraction, meaning a portion of a portion. Typically, students get confused when they think about a fraction of a fraction or a fraction of a remainder. This is when the branching method comes in really handy as it shows the student the flow of information chronologically. As usual, I will be using two examples from past year prelim papers to show you how we can use the branching method to solve of the remainder or a fraction of a fraction type questions. The first question is taken from CHIJ St. Nicholas Girls School and it is worth 3 marks. Reese made some candles and pins for sale. 3 eighths of the items were candles. She sold 2 ninths of the candles and 84 pins. In the end, she had 5 twelfths of the items left. How many pins did Reese make at first? So as you can see, apart from the parts highlighted in yellow, I've also underlined the keyword 2 ninths of the candles. So why is this a keyword and why does this mean we can apply the branching method? Because remember, I said a fraction of a fraction, right? Since the candles make up 3 eighths of the total items, 2 ninths of the candles would effectively mean 2 ninths of 3 eighths. And there we go, a fraction of a fraction. The key concept of this question is that the fraction of the total number of items sold is 7 twelfths. Why is that so? because it states here clearly that 5 twelfths of the items were left in the end. So 1 whole minus 5 twelfths would give us 7 twelfths. Our job now is to use the branching method to help us express the number of items sold as a fraction of the total. Okay, so let's get started. The beginning part of the branch would always be the original number of items. Since we do not have any information on how many candles and pins were there at first, we simply just write the word items. And we start branching. 3 eighths of the items were candles. So let's write that down. Since 3 units were candles, that would mean 5 units were pins. Out of the candles, 2 ninths were sold. That would mean that 7 ninths were left. If you're wondering about this part, since 2 out of 9 units were sold, then 7 out of 9 units were left. And out of the pins, we know that 84 were sold. We do not know the actual number of pins left over, so we can just leave it blank like this. So as we have discussed earlier, the number of items sold represents 7 twelfths of the total. Alright, how do we express the number of candles sold as a fraction of the total number of items? 2 ninth of 3 eighth, a fraction of a fraction. The term of, as students have learned in school, means times. So let's go ahead and do our multiplication now. 2 ninth of 3 over 8 of means times. So 2 ninth times 3 eighths. 
okay we can do a cancellation first so that our answer would already be in simplest form and that would give us 1 12 of the total what that means is that 1 12 of the total and 84 is actually 7 12 of the total from here we can work out what fraction of the total makes up 84 items so 7 over 12 minus 1 12 would give us 6 12 and to simplify that would be half so what we know now is that half of the total items is 84 that would mean that the total would simply be 84 times 2 and that would give us 168 let's go back to the question to see what it's asking for all right how many pins did Reese make at first? Okay, five eight of the items were pins. Now that we know that the total number of items is 168, let's write it down here. All right, that would mean that five eight of 168 items were pins. So as we have already learned, of means times. So 5 8 of 168 would give us, we can do cancellation here as well. And that would give us 105 pins. And that is our answer to this question. The second question is taken from Red Swastika School and it is worth 3 marks. In a basket, three eighths of the fruits are oranges, one quarter of the remainder are pears, and the rest are apples. There are twice as many green apples as red apples. What fraction of the fruits in the basket are green apples? Okay, as you can see, I've already underlined the keywords here one quarter of the remainder. So a fraction of a fraction. Therefore, we can use the branching method. The key concept of this question is that since one quarter of the remainder are pairs, three quarter of the remainder would be the number of apples. Our job now is to express the number of apples as a fraction of the total. From there, we will be able to find the fraction of just the green apples. So let's get started. Of the total number of fruits, 3 eighths were oranges. That would mean that the remainder would be 5 eighths. Out of the remainder, 1 quarter are pairs. And the rest are apples. So as discussed, the rest would be three quarter now there's a special case here because they further split the apples into this part over here there are twice as many green apples as red apples so what we can understand is that two u are green apples and one u are red apples so in order to express the number of apples as a fraction of the total, we look at the two fractions involved. 3 quarter of 5 over 8 are apples. And as we have learned earlier, of means times. So let's go ahead and multiply these two fractions. 3 quarter of 5 8. Okay, no cancellation to be done over here. So the answer is simply 3 times 5 equals 15. 4 times 8 equals 32.
right? Let's not forget there are twice as many green apples as red apples. So two units of green apples and one unit of red apples gives us three units in total. So three U would be 15 over 32 of the total. The question is asking us for the fraction of the green apple. So green apples make up two units. So let's find out what's one unit first. 15 divided by 3, that would give us 5 over 32. So 2 units would be 5 times 2, which is 10. 10 over 32 of the total fruits are green apples. Let's not forget that we have to express all fractions in the simplest form unless otherwise stated. So we can simply divide by 2. And our final fraction would be 5 over 16. And that is our answer to this question. I hope this tutorial was easy to follow and gives you a better idea of what the branching method is. If you have any questions for me or have any suggestions as to what topics you'd like to see in upcoming videos, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below or subscribe to this channel for more free tutorials.